So for this video, we are going to discuss about assessing model accuracy. Now, before everything else, let me ask you one question. So what do you think is the best method of all? Okay. And we have discussed uh, parametric or non-parametric and which one should uh, we follow more or we should, we should we use more? Okay. The answer is none. So no one method dominates all others over all possible data sets. So on a particular data set, one specific method may work best, but some other method may work better on a similar but different data set. Hence, it is important that we decide for any given data set which method produces the best results. But how do we evaluate that? How do we evaluate if a certain method produces an acceptable result? Okay. So we are going to assess the model accuracy given some um, metrics. Okay? So in order for us to evaluate the performance of a learning method on a given data set, we need some way to measure how well the predictions are matching the observed data. Okay. One of the most common regression metric is the mean squared error. So the mean squared error is um, expressed in this using this equation. Okay, so the most common regression metric is the mean squared error. So the mean squared error is as follows. So we take the squared difference of the actual and the predicted for all the observations. Okay, so the y sub i refers to the actual label and the y hat sub i refers to the predicted label. So the squared difference is the error, okay? And um, we take the mean of uh, all the errors in all the observations. So the y hat sub i or the predicted na um, output is uh, computed from or taken from the estimate of the function f given the features or the indicators x, okay? Well, n refers to the number of total number of observations and i is the individual observation or each na row in your data. Okay, so we can visualize it this way. Suppose we have the data points, okay? And uh, the value of y given the x, okay? So what we want to look for is the uh, line or the best na fit or the best na um, estimate of F, which is the line, okay? And in order for us to evaluate the um, quality of this line, we can look at the error or the residual, okay? Suppose we have um, uh, a new value X sub I, so what will be the predicted na y? Okay, so um, based on this line, uh, it predicts the value of y on this point. Okay, and in order for us to, uh, to measure how far away it is from the actual, we can take the difference. So the difference between the actual and the predicted is the error or the residual, okay? So the closer or the smaller the error is or the smaller the MSE is, and that means that the more accurate um, the model is. So what we are going to do is to compute for um, the error for each data point, okay, and then uh, we take the difference, take the square each of the difference, and then we will divide it. We add all those and we divide it by n, so which gives us the MSE. Okay. Now, um, the MSE is computed uh, using the training data that was used to feed the model. 
But in general, we don't really care how well the method works on the, the training data. Okay? What we are more interested in is the accuracy of the um, predictions that we obtain when we apply the model on the previously unseen test data. So why do we care about this one? So for example, um, we already know that um, these people on the training data have um, the risk of having diabetes or not. So we are more concerned about the future users, about the future people that we want to test the application on. So should the model, uh, can the model um, accurately predict whether that uh, future user can have uh, will have diabetes or not. So yeah, so another example is that um, suppose we are interested in developing an algorithm that predicts a stock price based on the previous stock returns. So we can train the method using stock returns from the past six months, but we don't really care how well our method predicts last week's price. So instead we care about how well it will predict tomorrow's price or the next month's price. So, okay. Um, that's why it is important that um, the model should not only work on the training data, but should also work on the test data. In other words, even if the test training data um, if the training data is high, we expect that we, at least it should also uh, provide um, a good uh, result on the testing data. So consider this um, example. So you can see here that um, the training error is decreasing monotically, meaning as you train the model, the training MSE is decreasing. Meaning you can say, ah, that uh, my model is getting accurate. However, when you test it in new unseen data or new unseen test data, you can see that the error is increasing. So when a given method yields um, a small na training MSE, but a large na test na MSE, meaning um, errors are large, we are said to be overfitting the data. So the method is working too hard to find the patterns in the training data and maybe picking up some random patterns or noise in the data. Okay. So the tendency is that if you introduce a new data, um, it will not be able to um, detect that pattern. Okay. 